Would you believe there's over 2 billion active YouTube users consuming over a billion hours of video every single day? What's more, 7 out of 10 consumers say that they purchase from a brand when they see it on YouTube. In today's official webinar, I'm going to teach you more about how to create your YouTube channel, how to come up with video ideas and upload them, and I'll even show you a cool new tool you may not be familiar with that's getting 6.5 billion impressions every single day on YouTube. You ready? Here we go. Now, when you think of video, you probably think of YouTube because YouTube's where people watch. In 2018, people spent more than 250 million hours per day watching YouTube, just on television screens via living room devices. But people watch YouTube from every screen, including mobile phones, desktops, and tablets. And in fact, there are now more than 2 billion monthly logged in users who collectively watch 1 billion hours of video per day. YouTube's where people discover things. By search volume, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, Google being the largest. And 85% of viewers turn to YouTube because of fresh content. And YouTube's where people engage. Seven out of 10 shoppers say they purchased from a brand after seeing it on YouTube. When now with all this in mind, it's clear that having a presence on YouTube can help your business build your brand, and connect with potential customers. In today's workshop, we're going to talk about how you can get started. And in the agenda, today we're going to talk about getting your business on YouTube by creating a channel, adding videos that help you achieve your business goals, and promoting your business with video ads. Then I'm going to close with some additional resources, and I'll open it up to questions. So let's start with how you create your business channel on YouTube. The first step is to visit youtube.com. It may be easiest to set this up on a desktop or laptop. Honestly, it is. If you have to use a tablet or a phone, totally understandable, it can be done. I would tell you that you're going to have a better user experience using a desktop or laptop computer. Now in the, right, in the top right, you click on sign in. You're going to need to be signed in to your Google account. So you'll enter your Google account email and password. Then we're going to assume that you do not already have a YouTube account. So you'll click on create account. You're going to be given an option. Do you want to do it for yourself or to manage for your business? And this is where you choose. Now, I have a personal channel that I have where I just look at my own fun videos. Uh, and then I have a business channel where I'm looking up marketing techniques and new strategies and learning about search engine optimization and all those fun things. So you could create a channel for yourself or you want to create a channel to manage your business. You see right here, we create the channel. Once we do, we'll be able to customize the channel. So YouTube will take you through a series of steps. It's called a wizard. Once you go through, you've given your channel a name, you've added a photo, then now you're going to see this preview of your public channel home screen. Now you can edit your channel by clicking the customize channel button. That's going to take you to YouTube Studio. You're going to want to write this down. YouTube Studio is where you control your YouTube channel. Think of it just like a producer booth, and you're the producer, you're the director, maybe you're the star. But YouTube Studio is where you're going to have control over how your channel looks, how it's organized. I'm going to take you through a little bit more of that in just a bit. One thing to point out on the screen, you also can see a button that allows you to upload videos to your channel. You can do this in a few places. There's also an icon up at the top. You see right here this little video camera with a plus sign. You can always click there when you're on YouTube in order to upload new videos. And when you click in to customize your channel, this is what you're going to see. So like I said, YouTube Studio is where you'll manage your channel. And from here specifically, you can customize the layout, the branding, and information for your channel. You can even create and manage playlists of other videos that maybe you want to share with friends, clients, customers. You can add and edit subtitles to your videos so that more people can read them and see analytics and a lot more. I'm going to jump in. Now, after you close the welcome dialog box, we'll be on the customization tab. And you see it's highlighted on the left. 
And in the studio, we have dashboard, content, playlists, analytics, comments, subtitles, copyright, and then down below, you'll see customization. So that's where we are right now. Now, if you don't have much content or video yet, you won't have much to customize. But once you do, make sure to come back to this tab. There's actually these customizations will help you attract more viewers to your channel. So there's three subsections of this customization tab. Layout, as you can see circled right here. Next to it is branding and then basic info. So in layout, we can customize the content on the channel homepage. The first thing is you have the option to add a video spotlight. So I liken this to a welcome video. And in fact, if you go to Bigger Better Biz, you'll see my welcome video if you haven't subscribed. It's a video where I'm actually telling you, hey, this is what you can expect from the channel. Here's why we created it. And here's what you can do to join the community and be a part of everything. So you could use this as a video spotlight to either welcome people or you could spotlight a product or a service you offer. You could just have a story. You could be telling a story about how your business came to be. The world's your oyster here, but you definitely want to make sure once you get some videos up that you have a spotlight video chosen. Now that video spotlight actually appears at the top of the channel homepage. And here's something cool. You have two options. Notice here how it says channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed. That could be your welcome video where you're saying, hey, welcome to XYZ channel. Here's why we created it. Here are the types of videos you can expect and when you can expect them. And so what you're doing is you're actually sharing expectations. You're setting them, but you're also welcoming them in and giving them an idea. Hey, every Thursday, we're going to be posting a video or every two weeks or every 15th of the month, you'll have a new video about whatever topic. Humans are creatures of habit. If you can inform them and say, hey, on this channel, here's the habit you have to form in order to get the information. The more return viewers you'll have, the stronger your channel is. Now you see down below, featured video for returning subscribers. Hey, you already subscribed, now let me share even more value with you. This could be maybe a product demo or it could be hyping up a new sale or event you have. For me, it might be a recording of a previous webinar or class that I taught that I want to share with my subscribers so that they can continue learning even when we're not in these classes together. Now underneath, you can manage sections. And sections allow you to customize what viewers see when they land on your channel homepage. And they're made up of videos and playlists and they really help you organize and showcase content. You can have up to 12 sections. Be sure to write that down. You can choose up to 12 sections to include on the homepage and you can order them as you like. Big thing is you want to organize and promote content that you want to highlight on your channel using these sections. A section lets you group videos together to help your audience make decisions about what to watch. Next to that is the branding tab. With this tab, you can add various branding elements and those really give your channel a unique look and they let, know, they let the viewers know what they can expect if they subscribe. So first, you can add a profile picture. Your profile picture will appear wherever your channel is represented on YouTube, like next to your videos, comments, and in user search results. You want to make sure you have a quality profile picture, not something that is fuzzy or pixelated. Let's think about it for a second. If you see a photo that's fuzzy or pixelated, and it represents a channel where you're going to be watching videos, most viewers would think, hmm, probably those videos are fuzzy and pixelated or the quality is degraded or it's low quality. We don't want to give potential viewers any reason not to click on our video. So you want to have a nice, crisp profile picture. The profile picture could be your logo. It could be a photo of your product. It could be a photo of your van or your team. It could be you. So you can choose, just make sure it's a nice, crisp, clear picture. Next, you can add a channel banner image, and that's also known as channel art. It's up at the top, and this appears across the top of your channel, and it gives viewers a visual sense of your channel and content. I'll show you an example in just a few minutes of how we actually use the channel banner to drive more people to download our guide. Finally, you can add a video watermark. You can choose what time that watermark shows up on your videos. It will appear on the bottom right-hand corner of the video, 
And if any viewers click on it, they'll be able to subscribe to your channel. Finally, there's the basic info tab. So this tab lets you edit your channel and you can add a channel description, translations for your channel name and description in other languages if you're trying to reach other countries or other speakers, add links to sites you wanna share with your viewers, and you can add contact information in case people want to email you with business inquiries. Now, once you make any changes, make sure that you click on the publish button. That way, it makes sure that your changes go live on your channel. And I'll give you two examples. Here's an example of a well-developed YouTube channel, DIY Creators. So notice, very crisp, clean banner image, channel banner, a profile picture that has DIY Creators on it with a smiling face. And again, this plays into, hey, you're going to be watching me. I should be smiling, the photo should be nice and polished because these videos, I'm going to be smiling and happy and friendly and welcoming, and they're going to be good quality. The other thing you see is a spotlight video right here. In this case, six woodworking tips and tricks for beginners. Now this has gotten nearly 10 million views in over two years. So that's the video that this gentleman chose to showcase on the channel. Here's another example. So in this case, I wanted to break it down a little bit more. So this is right now, it's similar to what you would see if you went to Bigger Better Biz on YouTube. On the channel art, what we did is we actually made sure that we have a call to action. We tell people, hey, you can download this free resource. And then if they click, they'll be brought to a page where they can download our free checklist or guide, something that's going to help them grow their business. In addition, what we did is we used a little bit of text to say, hey, this is the expectation for the channel. You're going to receive tools, tips, and takeaways to grow your bigger, better biz. And then there's a picture of me because I'm in most of the videos. Notice the profile picture. Again, it's me, but it has a blue background so that it stands out. Name of the page or the name of the channel is Bigger Better Biz. There's that welcome video I talked to you about. So when people are coming on, if they haven't clicked subscribe, they see my smiling face waving at them, welcoming them to the channel and telling them what they can do. And then this is just one of several sections. I don't have 12 sections. You don't need to use 12 sections, but this is one section you can, where we created a playlist and then we showcase that. We can basically choose the organization or the order of these different sections, depending on what we wanna showcase on the channel. So before I move forward, let me ask you, how many of you have built a channel? Type in me if you've built your own channel. Type in, oh yeah, if you're planning on building your own channel after following or after seeing those quick steps. Seeing me, I'm seeing people typing me. I got a channel. Just started my channel. Excited for this. Awesome. Oh yeah, going to start it after this. Very good. Okay, good. I'm excited too. I'm glad you are too. So you've got your channel set up. Let's pretend we're all there. We've got our channel set up. Now we need videos, but let's talk about how to create ones that will promote your business. Now, if any of you have ever created or shot a video, you know that you can shoot them on your smartphone. You don't need a lot of production equipment. You see that photo on the left? That was actually, that looked like my basement years ago when I started uh, the YouTube channel. And I invested in these big lights and this fancy camera and this fancy microphone. I spent a good deal of money. And those lights get hot really quick. So I started cooking like an egg in the basement. I soon realized all I needed was a smartphone. I have an iPhone, you might have a Samsung or anything like that. You can use your iPhone or your Samsung. You can use a smartphone or a tablet. They have good enough cameras to create videos. One thing I want to point out on the right-hand side, notice how this creator is using a tripod. You see that the phone is secured in this little holder. If you can, if you have the resources, definitely get a tripod. Invest in a tripod. They're as cheap as $15 online. You might be able to find them at local stores. But the reason being, that way you can have the phone set up. You can press record, you can record your video, and it's nice and stable. It's not moving, it's not shaking. That way it adds to the quality of the video. 
before you make your first video, I want you to think about what you want the purpose to be. And what do you want your audience to take away from the video? What do you want them to feel good? Maybe you want them to feel good about your brand. You want them to feel empowered. You want them to feel energized and charged. Do you see a certain topic where you're an expert? Do you want them to view you as a thought leader in that topic? Do you want to use video to connect to your origin story? Think about what to focus on for this video. Is it introducing a product, giving an overview of your business? Decide who you want to star in the video. Is it you? Is it an employee? Maybe a loyal customer that loves getting on camera? Are you still stumped? Here's a few ideas to help you get started. I'm going to ask you these questions, so feel free to write these down. I'll say them slowly. What's the process for your service? So soup to nuts, here's a great example. Any realtors, uh, mortgage loan officers, mortgage brokers, insurance agents, lawyers, anybody where there's an involved process, a video about your process, how it starts, each step, how it ends, what they can expect, that is a powerful video that's gonna help you win customers because you're taking away some of their fear or anxiety about the process by educating them on it. So what's the process for your service? Another one, how does your product work? People love knowing how things work. There's a show dedicated to it. So maybe you explain, maybe you actually show and demonstrate how the product works. Hey, how's the product made? Is it something that's manufactured in a factory or is it sourced from sustainably from the earth? Is it from a certain country or region in the world? People would love to know the origins and how the product's made so they can appreciate the product when they have it. What makes you stand out? Not what makes your competitors worse than you, but what makes you stand out? What differentiates your business from the others without, being, uh, without speaking disparagingly of your competitors? We never want to do that. Unboxing videos. How many of you have watched unboxing videos? Type box, B-O-X, if you've watched an unboxing video. In an unboxing video, to give you an idea, let's say you have a product. It could be anything. Maybe it's like a, let's just say that it's, it's a new video game console, right? Or a new phone. So you create a new phone, you put it in the box, you wrap it up, you put tissue paper on top of it, you put some of that confetti in, you close the box, tape it up, put wrapping paper on it, put the bow on top, and then all you do is you set your phone up in the tripod that we talked about, press record, and you start narrating. You start explaining to people, hey... I'm going to show you this amazing thing. I'm so excited to show you, but I want to tell you a little bit about it before I show you. Do you know why people watch those videos? It has to do with a joke my dad taught me years ago. You want to know how to keep someone in suspense? Ask me tomorrow. If someone's in suspense, if they can't get it, if there's that cliffhanger, if they need to know, they need that closure, that's where an unboxing video is so powerful. Now, of course, everything in moderation. Don't do all unboxing videos. But you could do an unboxing video that lasts a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and you're able to talk about your product, what makes it different, why people should buy it, and then, ta-da, there's the product. How-to videos. Some of the most searched for videos on YouTube. Remember, YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google. People are coming to YouTube to learn how to put together a crib or to put together a piece of, let's say, modular furniture from Ikea or somewhere else how to fix something in their house. Great example. One of our cousins, English is a second language for her. So she, she felt more comfortable going on YouTube and typing in saying she needed to fix her washer. She typed in the model number. She found a video, watched the video, learned how to replace the belt all through YouTube without having to go through a service person. Now, of course, if you're a service person on this call, you're like, well, I don't want to give away the business. No, but people, you can still teach them how, to, if you're an electrician, how to replace a socket. Chances are most of them might stun themselves. I did. And then the next time I said, oh, I'm calling an electrician. This is out of my purview. So how-to videos are very powerful allies for you. Great content. And also great content you can put on your website or blog. The last thing you want to think about 
frequently asked questions and write that down. Frequently asked questions. With every client we're working with, we have tasked them with coming back to us with 10 to 20 frequently asked questions. If YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, people are going to YouTube to type in their questions. If you write those down and you create content to proactively answer those questions, you win the game. You have a chance of showing up when those people are searching for answers. So here's something cool. YouTube partnered with research company Kantar to analyze 10,000 video ads from small and medium businesses across the US, Canada, UK, Australia, and Korea. Then YouTube analyzed what worked best and develop some ideas that can help you shape your plan for creating your own effective videos. These are tips, they're not hard and fast rules, just tips. So here's what the research uncovered. There are three story types. The business story, the product or service story, and the promotional story. Now the business story is your chance to show your personality and build a connection with potential customers. This is where you're gonna use the business story to highlight who you are, what you do, and why you do it. I want you to think of this as the story of you. I have a client, I don't, you can tell I'm full of stories myself. I had a client who was actually a mentor. He was my Sandler sales coach when I was working at a tech startup many moons ago. And he became a mentor of mine. And one of his sign off lines when he's talking to people when we were actually working on his YouTube channel was, hey folks, remember, before someone will buy your product or service, they have to buy you. That's where the business story and the story of you is so important. People wanna do business with other people that they like, that they trust, that they know. The next story type is a product or service story. So product or service stories can help move potential customers from being aware of your business to being interested in making a purchase. So the, the business story is kind of like a, hey, getting to know you or acquaintances, this product or service story, hey, now that we know each other, let me show you a couple things and see if maybe it's of interest. And last but not least, the promotional story. So this story type is great for announcing special deals or timely information. Now recommended length, as you've seen, for promotional story and product is 15 to 30 seconds. Really quick blip. A promotional story video works best after customers are aware of what your brand stands for and they know how your product works. So now they know you, they like you, they trust you, they've learned about your product. This is where, hey, we're gonna send a promotional video or upload a promotional video to YouTube to get them over the fence and get them actually buying from us and convert into a customer. Let me ask you actually, before I move on, I want you to type in, you're an engaged group and I love it. Type into the questions box, which of these three story types really speaks out to you? Which one would you create right after ending this class? Let me know in the questions box. And I'm seeing business, business, service story, uh, product. I got to do my product story, then my promotional story, either of the first two, business and product. Yeah, personal, promotional story, need all three. Hello, Michelle, but first, but first one first. Yep, baby steps, service story, awesome. Okay. So you all have an idea of what type of story you would shoot. Once you've decided what you wanna shoot, we wanna make sure you follow best practices when deciding what to say. I'm gonna tell you something and I want you to write it down. No one knows what I'm going to say. Write that down, circle it, star it, highlight it, underline it, whatever you gotta do, point arrows at it, dedicate your own page to it. No one knows what I'm going to say. If you can, Keep telling yourself that before you get in front of the camera, you're going to reduce your anxiety. 
or kind of that apprehension you have of being in front of the camera. Here are some things. You want to share a clear, concise message with your viewers. You don't have to be a talking head that talks for 10, 20, 30 minutes. I've seen those videos. A lot of the time, people might just tune out. Clear, concise message. You have to remember, you need to make a strong impression, and the first 5 to 15 seconds are crucial. These first 5 to 15 seconds, they basically tell the viewer or give the viewer enough information that they decide if they want to continue to watch. You also have to realize so many people are overstimulated. Someone like me that's neurodiverse, I have ADHD. So for me, you don't have a long attention span. you got to get to the point real quick or I'm off to the next thing. But a lot of people are just overstimulated with technology. They're sitting down, they're about to watch your video or they press play and then their phone goes off or the kids start asking for something or their partner or roommate or friend or family member needs something. All these different things can overstimulate them and then they lose interest. So you have to get to the point and lock them in. If you remember back in elementary and middle school, that hook, you know, that first sentence of your first paragraph of your paper, you got to hook them in. That's what we want to do in that first five to 15. The other thing is your video should not be an overt sales pitch. Unless you're doing a parody of ShamWow or OxyClean or one of those, may he rest in peace, you want to make sure that it's not an overt sales pitch. You can have a call to action, and you should, even possibly a timely offer, but don't make the whole video, you should buy. Here's why you should buy. You got to buy because people don't want to watch that. What you want to do is tell them what next step you want them to take, maybe to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date, or as you saw on my channel, maybe download a guide or join our mailing list or join our free community. So you have choices, but if you're taking the time to come to this class, then go record your videos and you all have written out business, product, personal, promotional. Well, you take all that time, you upload it to YouTube, then what? What are you trying to get them to do? Now, after examining the videos, researchers also identified eight creative techniques that were common themes throughout the videos. Again, not tips, or these are tips, not hard and fast rules. So. The techniques can help you make effective videos. We're going to start with selfie style. We all know selfie style. This tried and true technique brings YouTube to life every day. In a selfie style video, someone representing your brand, could be you or an employee or a customer, is in the middle of the story, telling the story of what you want to do. It's a simple, authentic way to quickly put a message out there or build a connection with viewers. Selfie videos are you connecting, especially if you're looking right in the pinhole of the camera, you're connecting with people, you're making eye contact, quote unquote. If you could do that and make that connection, tell a story that's authentic, you're getting people to know you and possibly like you. I'm sure you're likable. The second technique, choosing the perfect backdrop. Use a flat, solid colored backdrop to showcase a product or a person talking on screen. You know, you can go online, you could buy something as simple as a green sheet or a white sheet or a black sheet if you want a black background just to have solid. You can go online there. Uh, I know that I bought a green screen and it's one of those cool green screens like going back to elementary school when they would pull down the map or the projector screen. That's what I have. So when I'm done, I just pull it and it shoots back up. Now, this simple filming technique can help reduce background distractions and create a sleek look for your video. In fact, I consulted and coached, I provided a, a training for this corporate sales team. What we did is we went through and had each of the sales reps record a video. And then we would go through as a team and we would kind of critique and uh, provide constructive criticism. Well, one of the sales reps was amazing on camera, smiling, uh, looking into the pinhole, very, very energetic and engaging. But behind him was a box of Kleenex that was hanging off the shelf. Uh, an award, some papers. I wasn't paying attention to him or his message. I was paying attention to the stuff behind him. So you want to make sure that you're really aware and cognizant of what's going on in the background. The third technique is the voiceover. We do these quite a bit. You narrate your video with an off-screen voice. So voiceover can cover product benefits, unique features, and more. You want to use it with video you've filmed yourself, or you could use stock video, or even a montage of photos as a slideshow. And voiceover is a great way for you to start kind of getting your toes wet in video without having to get in front of the camera. 
Fourth is point and shoot. This technique is really handy if your video needs more action. It can bring energy and excitement to the content you create. So what you're gonna do is incorporate motion. You would use panning, going left to right, and zooming in and out for a video that's really action-oriented and exciting. Now, if you can do it on your camera, like my kids have realized and figured out how they can pinch and zoom and do all those things and even turn the lighting up and down, go for it. You may also require an editing software. Next, we have top-down. A top-down shot can actually create the illusion of tactile sensation, like you, the viewer, have the product in your hand. So this is where you might be holding the product and you're holding the camera by your face and you're filming the product as you describe it or play with it. You see these quite a bit with overhead cameras. So you position the camera high above your product and then you film it on a flat surface. Great way to show a hands-on product demo. Like it sounds, action is useful for products that are more interesting in action. So filming in action is a great way to get viewers to better understand how your product looks, works, and operates. You know, it's sometimes it's like I could describe to you how this product works and maybe you're going to get it, just like I showed you how to set up a channel, or I could take you through and give you the demo and actually step-by-step, step, which we don't have the time today, but I could do that and show you step-by-step. Step. That's very much so like, you know, taking an action video. Another way to help viewers understand your video is to use a technique called told with text. This is where you add text to a video and it can highlight what the narrator is saying. So it emphasizes certain words, really drives home certain points. It can also be used for videos that have no narration at all. I'll tell you, we actually create a lot of videos for our clients where we take their blog posts and we turn them into these kind of told with text videos that have uh, stock music. So we have background music, we have video footage or, or photos, and then we have text on top. And that's a great way to actually live in our clients' blog posts. Last one, technique eight, animation and motion graphics. This technique is especially useful if you're promoting a service or a digital product. So, okay, with animation and motion graphics, you use illustrations or motion graphics and you showcase your product's benefits. And this works especially well for services and digital products like software, where you may not have a physical product to show. So of all those, tell me which of these eight common techniques is one that you would consider doing or you've recently done. Tell me in the questions box. Oh, I see voiceover. You got the backdrop. Love it. You did a text video uh huh, with the text highlights. Oh, you purchased an animation. You hired an animator. That's great. Selfie video I'm seeing. Another backdrop. A top down. You've done that. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Point and click. Hey, and the other thing too is feel free. You're going to get an email from me after this class. If you want me to take a look at your video and give you some feedback, just reply back with YouTube link and I'll be happy to give you a couple notes. Now, when shooting your video, think about your space, the lighting and sound. Try to think visually. Your space should be clear of clutter. Like I told you, that gentleman had great presence, but he had Kleenex and papers and all these kuchkis all behind him. It wasn't good. It was a distraction. So we want to think visually, want to clear the clutter. Your space can also reinforce your company brand by including your logo, or your workplace location. Now, having enough light is really important. If you can use natural light, position yourself where the sun or the natural light is hitting your face, not behind you. You don't want to have shadows. Here's why. Think about shadows. If any of you remember America's Most Wanted, they had informants, right? And those informants, they were in the shadows. They were hiding something. They were hiding their identity. Well, we really think about the shadows as hiding something, right? So if you have shadows on your face, but you're telling me all these truthful, honest, candid points about your product, service, or business, something in me says, there's shadows. I'm going to focus on that. Or maybe there's some reason to mistrust. We don't want that. Don't give viewers any reason to have any doubts about what you're saying, the legitimacy of your messaging. 
So try to get rid of all shadows. In fact, you could just get a floor lamp and put it in front of you so that you just well lit on your face. You could also check out a ring light, R-I-N-G, just like a wedding ring, ring light. Those are also available at most local stores. Third, sound. Are there distracting background noises to avoid? How does your audio recording sound? You may want to use a microphone to help. And beyond the quality of recording, how do you sound? Speak confidently, clearly, and don't rush through your script. Remember what I said, they don't know what I'm going to say. So as long as you take your time, speak slowly, clearly, and confidently, you're going to get through it. In the YouTube audio library, you can also find royalty-free production music and sound effects that you can use in your videos. And these music and sound effects, they're copyright safe. So you can find it in the YouTube studio under audio library. Okay, let's say your video is done. You're happy with it. Now it's time to add it to your channel. So we're gonna go back to YouTube studio. We're gonna click on create up at the top. And remember I told you there's that little camera with a plus sign and we'll click on upload videos in that dropdown. So once we do that, we'll be prompted to select a file. Again, this is easier on your computer, your desktop or laptop, but you can do it on a tablet or a smartphone. So we'll select a file and then we'll start uploading. Once you upload your video, we want to make sure we complete all of the information on the detail screen because this information will help people find your video. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. We've got to feed it good data. Make your title something that people are likely to search for. How to? A great title. You want to avoid titles like first quarter product launch. That won't mean anything to your potential viewers. March update. Oh no, snooze fest. Make it something that they're going to care about. Add a description with the right keywords that can boost views and watch time because it's helping your video show up in search results. And YouTube will pull three screenshots from your video for potential thumbnails. Now, if you don't like any of them, you can upload your own graphic file. Maybe you use something like Canva and that's a freemium where you can design mostly for free, a lot of free tools on there. So canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. I know a lot of people use that for their thumbnails. You can see these three options in the screenshot. If you scroll down, you would see a lot more, like adding the video to a playlist, defining your audience, making sure either it's for kids or it's not made for kids. If your video is a paid promotion, enabling automatic chapters to make your video easier to watch, even adding tags, which are descriptive keywords that can be useful if the content of your video is commonly misspelled. Otherwise, they play a minimal role in your video's discovery. We talk about language and caption certification, recording date and location, and if it's okay to distribute. We can make the video available for short sampling so that other people can share our videos and audio. And we can choose a category that lets us select basically is it education, is it comedy, is it about people and blogs? And then we can manage our comments, comments and ratings and allow people to either leave comments or we hide comments and likes. Now, after adding those video details, you can add end screens and cards. End screens can be added to the last five to 20 seconds of a video. You can use them to promote other videos and encourage viewers to subscribe and more. Now note, your video has to be at least 25 seconds long to have an end screen. You can use cards to make your videos more interactive. So cards, basically you see this little, this little thing right here, this little eye in a circle will show up in the top right corner of the video. Those cards, if someone were to click on it, it might have a poll, it might link to another channel or another video. For me, I'm able to link back to our website or to a specific page or a blog article. You don't have to add either of these two elements, but they're helpful and they help the viewer continue to consume your content. The next step is called checks. We're just making sure that the video is free from copyright claims, uh, especially if you're in the YouTube partner program, making sure that it's suitable for ads. 
the copyright check allows you to edit and fix your video if any issues are found. So let's say that you tr you grabbed a video offline, you downloaded something, uh, maybe that comes up as a copyright check because someone else created it, or you downloaded music or you're using a song that's very popular on the radio, but you don't have the rights to use it. This is where YouTube's checks screen will tell you that. And then we're gonna choose visibility. Who do we want to have access to our video? There are three options. Public videos can be seen by anyone using YouTube. Now, with public videos, once you put them public, they're out there. They can be found in YouTube search. They might even start showing up in Google search results over time. Unlisted videos and playlists can be seen and shared by anyone with a link, but they don't show up in search. So this is where you might make a video where you want to share it with friends and family, but you don't want everyone to find it. That's where you'd make it unlisted and share the link. And then private videos and playlists can only be seen by you and the people you choose. So I had told you about that sales training with the sales team. That's where we actually took that whole call, turned it into a private video, and then shared with specific people so that they could access the video. You can also set the date when you want to make your video public by choosing schedule. So if you are proactive and productive, and let's say you might record two or three videos, you can upload them all at once and schedule them out over one week, three weeks, five weeks, whatever you want to do. Once your video is published, spread the word. You want to share your video on a variety of social sites, via email, on your website, and be proactive about letting people know about your video. Send people text messages sharing your video saying, hey, watch this. Let me know, like it, and subscribe to the channel. Listen, be excited. Get them excited. This is something where you put time in. It's like, it's like an, an, another child, right? You really put time and labor and love into this. You want to make sure you're sharing it. There's also a new YouTube video format called Shorts. It's new, but it's reaching a lot of people. The YouTube Shorts player has now surpassed 6.5 billion daily views globally. What is YouTube Shorts? It's a way for anyone to create videos using just a smartphone and the Shorts camera and the YouTube app. So you would need the YouTube app, which is free, download it to your phone, and then your phone. You can use it. You create selfie videos, or you can use your back camera, your rear camera. YouTube Shorts creation tools make it easy. You create vertical videos up and down. They're short form. They can be up to 15 to 60 seconds long. And then you can add some a song or an audio clip from YouTube's audio library. Now, Shorts is in beta. YouTube is gradually expanding the Shorts creation tools to everyone globally with the YouTube app. If you don't see the option to create a short just yet, make sure you go into your app store or Google Play and update the YouTube app. And one last note, you can upload short videos you created without YouTube's creation tools. You can do them directly from your computer. All you would do is include hashtag shorts. So you do the little hashtag sign and then type in the word shorts in your video's title or description. And that way YouTube will know that it's a shorts video. So whether you're just starting out or looking for ways to improve, check out Creator Academy creatoracademy.youtube.com. You see the link in the bottom left. This is a great starting point if you want to learn more about creating videos and also really optimizing your channel and getting the most out of it. So let's look at one final way to use YouTube and videos, and that's through advertising. What I'm going to do is let me see if I actually have Stephanie with us. I do. I'm going to introduce you to Stephanie from Tulane's Closet. I want you to see how she uses YouTube and video ads to grow her business. Here we go. Sorry about the snorting. <laughs> Normally after a surgical procedure, pets typically go home with what's called a cone or an e-collar. My name is Stephanie Seiberg and I am the owner and developer of Tulane's Closet. When I was in veterinary medicine, I had a lot of clients come and ask if there was something else out there that they could use, and that's how it kind of got started. I had an idea. It's a one-piece post-surgical pet garment. The advantages of the Cover Me by Chewy is that they can eat, sleep a lot easier than wearing a cone. They can actually get through the doggy door. They can relax comfortably. 
video can show people what it's made out of, how to put it on, how easy it is to use the potty cover. <laughs> YouTube, it's great for people that are just starting a new business or small business owners like myself because we're all on a budget. As you see that business is growing, you can always add to that at any time. We have doubled almost every year since we started in 2013. There's so many people now that really consider their pet their family and they want them to be comfortable. I think a lot of dogs are a lot happier right now. <laughs>
U.S. businesses can get up to 500 scholarships each to the Google Career Certificates Program to train their employees. Now, these scholarships are worth up to $100,000 in workforce training per American company. And businesses can use Google Career Certificates to train their employees for jobs in data analytics, digital marketing, e-commerce, IT support, project management, or user experience UX design. Now, no experience is required, and employees can earn an industry-recognized credential in three to six months in a part-time study. Now, for every scholarship we give, a business will be gaining capabilities, and at the same time, an employee will be growing new skills. So you can check it out, and businesses can apply by going to grow.google forward slash certificates for business. You see that in the blue box right here. And finally, if not for Grow With Google, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't get to do what I love. I hope you can tell that I love what I do and that I put my love into this. I really want to make sure that you're getting value out of it. Let me ask you all, did you get value out of today? Did you learn something new that will either help you create that channel or create that next video that's going to maybe win some new customers, share your story, highlight a product? Let me know in the questions box if you had an aha moment, what stuck out, and ultimately if you got value out of our time together. I'm seeing yes, yes, oh yeah, always do. Thank you, Kevin. Oh yeah, big time. Value to the max. Love it. You're so, thanks, Michelle. You're so good at what you do. I try. I love it. So it's not even a job. It's just fun. And I'm glad you're all getting value too. You're welcome, Jermaine. You're welcome, Sandra. My pleasure. So here's what I'll do. I'll open it up to questions. Now, I want you to learn. So you can learn from my YouTube channel. You can go to briankaplan.com forward slash YouTube. Poke around. Look at the videos. Look how we structured and, and set up the channel. And subscribe because we have new videos coming out all the time. So you can always continue learning with us for free on YouTube. And please, in the questions box, you all know where it is. Let me know. Do you have any questions? Is there something you'd like me to review again? Carrie's telling me the resources and the audio library were informative. Oh, yeah. And it's great that it does that copyright check for you, Carrie, so that you can just rest assured and have that peace of mind. Yep, the video is good to go. And if there is an issue, I've had a video that I actually uh, didn't create but was uploading for someone, and then it got one of those copyright checks because of the audio. So what did YouTube do? It said, hey, here's the audio library. Choose a new song. It was an easy fix. You're very welcome, Laura. Thank you for coming. So there you go, another Grow With Google class in the books. Hopefully this class brought you value. You're welcome to join me at future classes and register for free by going to briankaplan.com slash events. I hope to see you soon. Until then, stay well, stay healthy, stay happy, and here's to your success.